In this episode, I took a couple aluminum blocks and some knurling wheels and built a knurling tool for my tag lathe. Something I've been wanting to do for quite some time and I finally had the need for one, so off we go. Uh, the first thing I did was I took some two inch round bar of aluminum. I didn't have square stock or rectangular stock of the appropriate size. So I cut it roughly with a hacksaw and then faced a few sides. And here I'm just finishing facing the uh, last side uh, to get the, the appropriate size material. All the milling here was done with a four flute, just a generic uh, half inch end mill. Here I got super lucky, I just eyeballed the uh, where my scribe line was, thinking that I was just going to take off most of the material and then come back with a finishing pass, and I ended up eyeballing it to about a thou away from where I needed to be, uh, so I just left it like that, but not often does that happen. Here I touched off on the corner and I'm just going to be milling the slot down the center, or I won't be milling the slot, I'll be milling the two edges down. This is going to affix to the, or align with the T-slot in the cross slide of the tag lathe, and it'll keep the block from rotating once the force is put on the knurling wheels. And I just made it so it was a nice slip fit in the T-slot. I'm doing all the indexing uh, with just the uh, graduation markers on the hand wheels. I don't have DROs on this mill yet. This hole that I'm drilling is going to be the hole that the uh, cap head hex screw goes through to affix it to the cross slide. In order to get the knurling wheels at the exact height, I just put the center drill in the lathe and then affixed the one, one of the knurling blocks to the cross slide and uh, used the lathe itself to center punch it. That way I know I'm, I'm exactly on center. And from that I brought it back to the mill and, and finished all the drilling operations. Here I'm just laying out the scribe marks for where I'll be putting the cutout for the knurling wheel. I didn't make these blocks to any specific size, so um, I scribed them from both sides just to make sure that my alignment was, was dead on center. Here I am picking up that center scribe mark.
the wobble makes it look like it's actually off center, but the tip of that uh, centering tool is actually, I, I think it's slightly bent, so good for eyeballing. This isn't ultra critical, so if I'm within five thou, that, that's more than enough. Touching off to the material, and then I'll bore a few holes and then clean it up after. Once again, just using the hand wheels to move the head over where I need it and then drill the remaining holes to clear out most of the stall. I do have a DRO on the Z-axis and that's what I'm watching when I'm, when I'm drilling down to see that I've gone to the appropriate depth. There I just rotate back and check to make sure that I compensate it for my backlash in the hand wheels and then drill the last and final side. And here you can see the mock-up of what it's going to look like when it's finished. And this is how the knurling tool will spin once it's pressed against the material. This is going to be the grub screw that's going to hold the axle in place that holds the knurling wheel. And I believe I tapped it to M3. When tapping on this mill, I find that if I open up the uh, little teeth on the Jacobs chuck there, just to go over the top of my tap, and not to grip it, but just to, to steady it, I then put the tip of the tap in the hole and uh, just keep the jaws over the top of the tap and it keeps everything concentric. I do have a little brass pin that'll also index into the top of the tap, but it's, uh, it's easier to do it this way. I don't have to get something else. And, put it in and whatnot. Once all the tapping was finished, I just brought the center drill back down just to clean up the little burr that was left. And here's that little grub screw. Next I decided to make some uh, brass washers that will go inside of the knurling tool and any steel to aluminum contact just to make the tool last a lot longer and, and just because it looks nice. Uh, so here I'm just facing off some, some brass material. You can also see that my tool height is not set right but I built another thing that I will show you in another video for that. also see my blue thumb from the spray on bluing stuff which is not the way I should be using it I should definitely get the brush on stuff I'm trying to drill with too big of a drill there so I just switched to a small drill just to clear the uh, hole in the center for the pilot Once again, this is pretty non-critical work. I'm just sizing drill bits by eye to make sure that they'll clear all the axle diameters that I need. And uh, here I'll be uh, part using the parting tool to make all the washers. I use my little machinist square to square out the parting tool so that I'll be cutting flush on both sides. 
And here I set my calipers to about 30 thousandths of an inch just to give me some little, little brass washers. Once again, if these were ultra critical, I would have used a dial indicator on the uh, little stop for the lathe and then dialed over uh, 30 thou. But once again, not, not ultra critical. There's room for the knurling wheels to move. So this is just to keep them from uh, marring up the aluminum and help them slide nice. With everything cleaned up, this is the final assembly. You can see all the little washers I made, and I also made some small ones that go on the uh, 1024 uh, screws that pull the two blocks together. Off camera, I also turned up some pins, which you can see there, just uh, some drill rod. And here I am trying to get all the washers and knurling wheels and everything lined up. And then once they're in the correct position, I just tighten that little grub screw and that keeps the axle in place while giving enough room for that knurling wheel to move back and forth to help it index into the cut once, uh, once we start cutting with it. Off camera, I also drilled the uh, holes on the sides of the block that these tensioning rods go through. You can only watch someone drill holes so long before it gets boring. Here it is, all finished up. So let's see how it works out. You can see how that center uh, pin I've made indexes with the with the cross slide there, and it keeps the block square. And then I just eyeball it close and put it over the stock. I pinch the wheels, and I use the uh, little screw rods there to apply tension. So there's really no load on anything. The only thing that the carriage has to do is just keep the blocks from spinning with the material, which is no issue at all. Uh, here I tighten them up way too tight because uh, I've never done this before. This is the first knurl I ever did with it. And then once I snug those down, it kind of pinches the blocks in tighter and really grips the workpiece. You can see me backing it off because I just I snugged them up way too much. And there you can see the neural starting to develop. Once I got a good track, I just put a little bit of pressure on the cross slide and the neurals just keep working down the material, uh, doing their thing. I'm doing it by hand, just spinning the, uh, spinning the headstock there by hand. And I did about three or four passes uh, back and forth to get a deep enough neural. And what you're looking at here is a finished result. So get the material or the uh, jig out of the way. And there's a little bit of oil on it, so I'll clean it up in the next shot. But this one still has oil on it and the little brass particles. But it was perfect. So I'm happy with it. And thanks for watching.